Hello everyone, and welcome to a new series on the channel. Welcome to Cloudfall Zoo. So, I think two videos ago I recreated the abandoned Grotteskia Zoo in Cape Town. So, and if you haven't checked that video out, I'd recommend go checking that out. But essentially, that was a the Grotteskia Zoo is a zoo that opened in 1931 and closed in the 70s. And it's based on the foothills of Table Mountain. So I recreated the, the ruins of that zoo, what still existed. Like I said in that video, I was going to come in and on top of the ruins build a new zoo. And that's exactly what I've done here. So like I said, if you haven't seen that first video, you should go check it out. So you can actually get the comparison. But yeah, a lot of the stuff, like all these old wood pillars and the trees and that, they were all built in that episode. But as you can see now, I've added a whole bunch of other stuff, so like, I mean, this cape was here before, but like, this whole wall is new, this truck is new, the angry archer that I was supposed to delete but forgot to, that's also new. Yeah, so this is this is just some backstage stuff of the zoo, which I'm not going to show off this episode, because it's not completely complete yet, but get a bit of a preview for now. But, uh... Yeah, so before I begin, I should probably explain what the zoo exactly is. So it is a, a different kind of project. So this project is part of the Zoo Sims United ZSU project. And so if you're from the Zoo Tycoon 2 community, you might remember the Zoo Tycoon 2 Endgame project, the UCZ, or even the RTZI. So this is something like that, in case you don't know what any of those things are. So, Zoo Sims United, or ZSU, is a collaborative roleplay style project that adds essentially a multiplayer aspect to zoo building simulators. So it's like franchise mode but better. It's a lot more interactive with other people. So we have this nice little Discord server where it's all hosted in. And essentially what you do is that if you want to become a member you can sign up and start off with a small zoo limited to 15 species. I think the rules are different for aquariums but I, I'm not too sure on that, you're going to have to ask staff, but yeah, you saw with a small zoo, max 15 species, and they're all going to have to be like starter species, so you aren't going to start off with anything massive like an elephant or a giant panda, and then over time you grow that zoo, so like you obviously choose a location and your starting species will be, and the species you can also acquire over time will be based on the, the location you choose, so the, the zoo is obviously uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Like I've said before. And yeah, there's zoos like all over the place. I see that I think there's a few in South America. A lot of them in the Netherlands. Because this, that's how this project's always turned up. Most of the zoos are in Europe. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not throwing shade on anyone that wants to build a zoo in Europe. I'm just saying. Not very unique. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, let me, let me explain this. So, yeah. And essentially the project goes from, from your starting species, you can accumulate more species, so your species will uh, give birth, and that's determined by the staff, not the in-game birthings. You can uh, trade with other zoos, you'll have events and competitions that gets you new species, there's auctions as well. And essentially you start off with three tokens, and tokens is what you use to buy new animals in the store and that, and every week, depending on your activity, you get more tokens, so... You don't have to make a video, I know UCZ in the past you had to make videos to participate. This one you just get a little channel in the Discord and you post all your updates there. So you can either just have it text based or you can post some pictures. Oh, and here's the fun thing about this, as you might have been able to tell with the name, it's called Zoo Sims United. So you don't have to stick to Planet Zoo, so there's a few... I think most people are doing Planet Zoo, but there's a few people staying with Zoo Tycoon 2, so if you prefer Zoo Tycoon 2 or like don't have a computer that can run Planet Zoo, just play that. Or you can change it up a bit. You can play Minecraft. I know someone's building a zoo in Age of Empires 2. Or if you really want to go classical, you can just take pen and paper and draw your zoo out. I'm, I think that's okay. I think that's allowed. I mean, the more the merrier, right? Yeah, so if you want to become a member of the ZSU, I will, like I said, Discord link in the description. You can go click on it. Read the rules, because the rules probably explain it better than I am and give more details into it. And see if it's something that you'll enjoy. And if you want to sign up, please do. The, the more the merrier. And yeah, so that will kind of dictate the species that the zoo will get. Because it's not like 
Ooh, I want a lion, I want an elephant, I'm going to put it in. No. I'm going to have to work with the, the ZSU system and try and get the species I want. And I'll also get other species that maybe I don't want, but I end up having. And they'll be like, okay, cool, now I have to build exhibits for these. That's, that was my favorite thing with the UCZ back in the day, is that I ended up with a bunch of species. I'm like, okay, I have enough species to build a themed area now. I'll build like an Asian area, even though that wasn't in my plan. So, yeah. You can have plans and you can also have uh, they also throw events and stuff your way so it makes it a bit more variable and adds a bit more of a challenge to the, the project better than franchise mode where you have unreasonable animal needs and whatnot so yeah anyway let's go tour the zoo so of course I should mention offhand animal welfare is turned off because I don't like the, the plant and space and terrain and yada yada requirements but anyway, I should probably address where we are first. So if you remember in the Grotesquia recreation, there was a... This pathway was here, but before and there wasn't this fence. There was a, an empty, dried out, overgrown waterfowl exhibit. As you can see, I've come through and renovated that. So I decided over here we'll have this... Uh, a bit of a... a was it? A, pal a palisade, I believe. Yeah, so that people walking past, they can come in and catch a glimpse at the zoo. You know, give them a bit of a tease and maybe they'll want to come and visit. So as you can see we got some uh, tortoises. These are supposed to be leopard tortoises. I just use uh, the baby Eldabra giant tortoise to kind of represent that. And we got some waterfowl here. We'll take a closer look at them later. So as we walk past we can get a nice sneak peek. I like that. People just on their walk and be like, ooh, animals, we should go visit the zoo sometime. And yeah, yeah we enter the parking lot. I still need a add like road markings to this pavement and that in real life this is a one-way road so I think cars can only go this way but I think yeah since like we're opening to a zoo and that you're gonna want to have it go two ways just to be realistic and just to make traffic flow easier I haven't thought too much on that but yeah we got I got I made these little sign things with these faux rocks made out of font pieces of course the billboard and it points people to the zoo I also made the adjustments in some of the sign style, so yeah, eventually I'm gonna replace these uh, little logos maybe with some ads in that, so get the zoo some extra money and whatnot, but yeah. Yeah, and here's the entrance. Just for now it's a simple boom gate. You'll have like a staff member that'll sit here and just open the gate for cars to come in. Eventually I do want to make like a little ticket system, but for now I want it to be like rinky dinky uh kinda jank style. So that, that's what I'm going to do with this zoo. This zoo is kind of like Claintain Zoo in the sense that it's going to progress over time. Only Claintain Zoo is historical South African zoo. This one is more of a low budget South African zoo to a slightly less low budget South African zoo because I'm trying to think what inspiration. Like, um, so like Claintain Zoo takes inspiration from Pretoria Zoo and Johannesburg Zoo. This zoo will take inspiration more from things like Kango Wildlife Ranch, Mystic Monkeys and Feathers, and uh, I don't know, other small zoos like that. So like Mitchell's Park Zoo, even though that's a very old zoo, it is a, a small zoo and low budget, so it will, this will kind of represent Mitchell's Park Zoo better than Clayton Zoo will actually. Yeah, so... Yeah, this is the other entrance over here as well, so another boom gate, another chair that staff will sit through. Oh, and I, I almost forgot, I forgot to mention, there's a lot of blueprint stuff, I do have a collection in the description, so go and check that out, like, this chair was made by Just Goron, it's part of his uh, Congo restaurant pack, this car was made by Cool Dog, and those trucks we saw at the big, that truck we saw at the beginning by the, the backstage, I want to see if I can see it, no, I can't see it from here, but that was made by a keyboard keeper, I believe. And of course the stone pines we saw last episode as well, that's made by Pihoha. And uh, yeah, I'll, like I said, there'll be a, a big old collection of all the blueprints. Yeah, so this is the entrance of our place. As you can see, parking lot's still the same. I still need to add markings on here. I was a bit lazy, I'll do that eventually, but yeah. I also added lights, I forgot to add these lights last time. But yeah, these are lights. And here's the old, the entrance building. I really like how it looks. Why are the guests looking so sad when they come out? I don't know. But yeah, actually... Let me actually put on pause for a sec, because... 
as you can see, yeah, the, the way the, the path thing works, if you watched the last episode, you would have seen that, but the path is very clustered, so the guests, they kind of walk through the buildings and the planters, and yeah, as you can see, this this woman's walking through a, a wall and that through the grass. And that's just because of the way I had to do the pathing to get this kind of area. It's a bit weird, but yeah, it's, it's the best I could do. But anyway, over here we have a bit of a shop. So, yeah, it is a bit weird because, as I said, this path there, so the guests are kind of submerged. But what I did manage to do is uh, put a little gulpy stand here. This is using Ibn's boxless shop mod, so the uh, you can't see anything, you just see the, the person and the little cashier thing. And yeah, when guests want to buy something, they, they come up to the actual level fortunately, but when they're waiting in queue, they're all in the ground, so that's a bit weird. But if we stand, if we angle ourselves like, yeah, okay, you can kind of ignore them there. Yeah, this is just a a general kiosk shop thing. So we got like shelves. You'd have crisp and chocolate and sweets and whatnot here. Then you'd have uh, we have these ice cream things. These are based on like the Ola Nestle ones. Only I changed it to in-game brand. So we have the Cosmic Cow ice cream and we got the Pop Shot. So you can get some popsicles and whatnot. I even put some shells. What's it? Shells? These like little mesh pieces, use as barriers and even put little sticks there so there's little uh, planks to kind of look like popsicles yeah that's that's the store and then we got a little gulpy sign because this is a little gulpy slash machine let me actually press play because I believe yeah she yeah the shopkeeper she goes like she goes here and it looks like she's actually taking some slush out of this little machine that I made and we also got a little donut stand, a Missy Good donut stand there, so. And a fridge. So you can go buy some cans or bottles if you want. And we've got a TV, so when things things are things are slow, the Metella can just come and sit here and watch TV, I guess. And yeah, obviously that's that's where you buy your goodies, but to buy your tickets, we have our tickets all over here, so we've got some prices. Uh, a bit expensive for a small zoo, but this is like kind of average of what I've been seeing in all other South African zoos, so that's what I've been keeping it as. And yeah, I've used the new one-way glass panel, so if we go on this side, the teller, the person selling the tickets, they can see just fine, but we go, yeah, the person buying, they're gonna have to like press up against the glass to actually see inside, which I like. And yeah, we got this little tray thing, so you put your money in, the cashier, Pulls the tray back, takes the money, gives you back your ticket, and you can go on to the zoo. And I really, I like this. I like how this came out. So, oh, I opened something. So yeah, there's um, I got a little computer in here and this little chair. And if we go back here in the staff area, we've got these cabinets and this printer, and these were all made by Creative Games. So those will be in the blueprint collection. Got some more chairs by Just Goran, and we got guests walking through. That's the problem with the paths. That's annoying. If we had barriers, I could stop them from walking in the staff area, but yeah. So this is a bit of a staff lounge. Let's actually go. Let's respect the doors. As you can see, we got wheelchair ramps. So anyone can come in and out. And yeah, this is the zoo itself. Let's just take a little back view on the entrance. You'll come in and out this way. Maybe eventually we'll, I'll open up this section as an exit, but uh... Now, the guests are supposed to go in and out this way, but they just they just walk through walls. Yes, yeah, so this is the uh, zoo itself. In case you're wondering why these planters are weird, one, these trees were already planted. Yes, I wanted to keep them, and two, these are holding the uh, kind of see here. And they have the zoo entrance. There's one there, and there's another one over here. I believe. I can't click it, but there's a zoo entrance over here as well. So that's just to allow guests to come in. Because I can finally actually let guests in. Clayton Zoo, I don't let guests in because it will look weird. Because Clayton Zoo is in the 30s and people don't dress like this in the 30s. So. 
But anyway, let's, there's two ways we can go. Once you come in, you can go left or right. So I'm gonna head right first, since I think left is more interesting, so we'll save that for later. So, got a bit of a restroom here. Let's see, we've got a big building, and they actually got the, the cubicles in here. There's one over here, one over here. Men, women, and then a family and a disability restroom. Then we've got stairs, and that heads up there. Or we got a, a nice little a ramp. And some stairs that goes up here to those aviaries, which we'll check out in a bit. And yeah, one thing I want to comment on this planting is that a lot of inspiration from this planting has come from uh, Kirsten Bosch Botanical Gardens, which is uh, also it's a botanical garden found on Table Mountain as well. Realistically, it would actually be, just be like a few hundred meters or maybe like a few kilometers out. I, I'm not sure the exact distance, but it's pretty close by to this, to the location where this zoo is based. And see, so I was taking inspiration from their plants, their gardening. I won't completely copy them, since the botanical garden, their planters are like full to the brim with different plants. Kind of like what I did here, but I'm not going to do this everywhere. But I do really like how this has turned out, and I think I'm going to take some of these gardening aspects back to Claintain Zoo, just because I, mean, I, I, I like how this... Uh, I, got, I've, I think I've become a lot braver, you know, just filling up the, the gardens with plants that I wouldn't do before, and I, yeah, I'm going to take that to Clean Tin Zoo. Over here, we just got, this is unkept. They haven't done anything yet. Eventually, I'll build some exhibits or something here, and it'll neaten up, but for now, it's just overgrown with stuff. And, yes, first animal, we have our springbok. And it's supposed to be airlant as well. That's another thing I should mention for the ZSU. Is that if you take part in the project, you you can stick with animals that are in-game and modded, but in the end you're going to have to do, do, do with some implied animals, because... Like, I mean, they, they don't limit it to just animals that are in Zoo Tycoon 2 or Minecraft or Planet Zoo. It's, it's whatever animals in actual zoos, so... You're gonna have to either use some of the prop animals or just pretend that they're there. And that's what I'm doing here with the Yelant and the Springbok. So yes. the Springbok is the only animal we can actually see here because we don't have any Yelant mods or they're not in the game yet. I hope we eventually we get one because I really like Yelant. But yeah, this is their the very simple enclosure. This is supposed to look like a, what you'd find in these kind of zoos. I'm thinking the this is kind of based on the Tigerberg Zoo, which is a zoo that closed down in 2012. It was also in Cape Town. And they just had a, for some of the ungulates, they had a simple fence like this. Most small zoos in South Africa don't have that many ungulates. For ungulates, you actually have to go to like game reserves and safari parks and nature reserves and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that's what I did here. So for now, as you can see, very cheap. Just poles and chain link in between them. And like a little gate here, and as you can see, I've sunken in the the barrier there. So yeah, got a little feeder here, and we got a spring buck just chilling over here. And there would be Yelant as well, but no Yelant for now. And they got the little shelter up there. So let's take a closer look at that one. It's it's, very, it's a very simple crude shelter. I just Took some thatch, took some of the uh, bamboo walls. Boom, simple. If it gets too cold, they can go sleep in there, but otherwise, no. I did also put a scratching post in this tree, but they don't use it. That uh, Scots pine scratching post in this uh, tree here, but no. Now, here we got a big old gate, because if you want to get vehicles or something in here, then you can do so, yeah. And also, yeah, new thing I've, I've done, I've made signs, so. Yeah, if you're looking at these pictures, you'll be like, but the, you put Millie, there are better pictures on the internet. And I'll be like, yeah, I know, but most of these, all those pictures on the internet are posted by some internet random person, and I'm going to have to reference that random person if I do that. So, instead what I've been doing is just using pictures I've taken. So, some of them are, are good, some of them are okay, a few of them are crappy, which we'll see, but uh, the pictures I took, so makes it a bit more personal, and I also don't have to reference anyone for them. I'm just 
just my picture, so... Yeah. Most of them are from zoos or safari parks, so if you can recognize where they're from, and say in the comments, bonus points to you. Uh, all, all in South Africa, by the way. So, if you haven't been to any place in South Africa, I, I doubt you'll get it, but... Yeah, let's... Let's, um... Which way do I go from here, so... There's your line exhibit, which I'm not going to check out just yet. I'm going to head back this way to check out these aviaries on these elevated platforms. So, yeah, I like how this turned out. Remember last episode there was uh, some ruins here? Yeah, I actually misplaced them. The ruins are supposed to go on that side, so we'll see them in a bit. But uh, it cleared up space so I can make these aviaries. So, here we have some silver pheasants. And this sign is a uh, very simple, very very simple sign. Not very uh, high on effort. That's just because I noticed some places you go to, the signs aren't detailed. I think like Pretoria Zoo even, which is like the largest zoo in Africa. Some of the exhibits they'll just have the name of the animal, and I think that's just because they didn't plan to have that animal. So I wanted to keep that. Also, I was feeling a bit lazy, and also I'm hoping I can get a second bird species to come in here, so that way I can do both of those birds at the same time. So for now, solve the pheasant. And by the way, these ones are made by the... this is the TV screen, so unfortunately at night they do um, kind of lighter. The the Erland and Springbok one, that's a... Uh, that's um, the non-lit version TV screen, so that one doesn't light up fortunately, but these smaller ones do. Jeez, I'm glitching on this path. This is a two meter wide path, so as you can see, it, it creates some problems. <laughs> the game is not used to this, but I like it, so I guess they'll eventually make it through. Yeah, so first off, we've got a silver pheasants, then we come around this curve, and then we have some marabous. So I don't intend to have the marabous here forever, but it's just this aviary is open, and I, I happen to have the marabous from the ZSU project, so I put them in here. That's another fun thing with ZSU's that you trade species and you can also move them around. So in the future, there's definitely going to be some smaller birds in here, maybe a lot more plants as well. I've got a marabou sign, so if you want to check it out. Another thing I forgot to mention with the sign is that I made this whole dot map. Like it's not just Africa; I have the entire world. I think we'll see it in another map later. And so that way, I don't have to reference maps as well because I can just come in my dot map, color the dots. And put it in in here yeah, so yeah take these um range maps with a grain of salt because some of them um like the data i find have conflicting you know they conflict with each other some will say marabou's are you get further south some will say not it depends on the research and who's where you do it this i think distribution maps in general you should also take with a grain of salt because a lot of the times it is assumptions it's not like these all aren't point counts where they found marabou stalks, it's where they were... They assume that habitat is decent, so you'll probably find a marabou stalk here, but... IRL, you might not find a marabou stalk in the middle of Congo like this map suggests. But yeah, that's just a little bit about the distribution map. So the marabou's and the south uh, staff gets in. Anyway, let's head back down. We'll, the, now we'll go the other way if you come through the entrance. So we've got more bins and these are actually functional. They got we've got the actual bins inside of them. You can see there. Guess have been throwing the garbage away. And yeah we come to our another animal. The meerkat. So yeah, new animal from the Africa pack. Happy to make that. As you could see there was a gate here so I, I sunk the staff gate in this wall. Realistically, staff would just jump over, but yeah, this exhibit over here and that exhibit behind there with the tree trunks that you can see is kind of loosely inspired by the two entrance exhibits at the Kango Wildlife Ranch. So one of them is a meerkat exhibit. I think it's a bit smaller than this one, and then the other one over here. Let me actually just show you now. In Kango Wildlife Ranch, they have like a stump on a bunch of rocks. And that's a monitor exhibit, although yeah, it's a rhinoceros iguana. But let's let's focus on the meerkats first. But uh, yeah, I 
try to put some pathway in that like little um what do you call it chipwood path tree bark path tree bark yeah tree bark path in oh oh damn i hoped i'd attach it cam yeah so i just put some of that in to kind of give some texture variation although it looks it looks okay and the meerkats of course can burrow all around i put this um this feeder hidden into like this termite mound and i do think they can actually come the, the keepers do fill this up and the meerkats do come and eat from here so that's really cool i was afraid the hitboxes weren't going to line up but they do use that let's see if i can click on one so i can sh so i can show you traversable area yeah so they can traverse quite a bit of this uh, this exhibit yeah i'm really happy how it turns up Change the lighting, but get some more light in here. That's the meerkat exhibit. Just another thing I should say: the the signs. When I say habitat, I mean habitat in both distribution because I say the biome, so scrublands, grasslands, savannas. But then I also say southwest and southern Africa, so that's distribution. So realistically, this would say habitat and distribution, but I mean to save up on space, I just say habitat. And that's also a reason why I, you never hear me referring to these exhibits or enclosures as habitats. Because realistically, me as someone that studies animals and that habitat is, or not even just animals, just organisms, habitat is where they occur. Meerkat habitat is not a tiny space in a zoo, it's the actual desert or scrubland or grassland or savannas, you know, that's... That's why I don't I don't like the terminology that zoos use. It's trying to be like ooh naturalistic, but really all you're doing is causing confusion, because the shrub has natural the shrub has habitat as well. A mushroom has a natural habitat as well. So I don't like I don't like that, and it, and it confuses me because I'm like habitat. Wait, you mean the wild or the exhibit? So for me, habitat is where they live in the wild. And that's that's why I shall never conform to that normal rule. But anyway, more animals. This is another implied one. Uh, the vervet monkey. So no vervet monkeys in games, and I don't know if there's any prop ones on the workshop. So you're just gonna have to imagine them. But you can see them on the sign. And yeah, vervet monkeys. And here's another lazy sign: southern ground horned. And this time I did it on purpose because. Hornbills weren't supposed to be in here. These are both primate exhibits. Based on ones you see at Mystic Monkeys and Feathers. I'll post a picture on screen now. And you can see how close my inspiration is to these exhibits. And yeah, so eventually once I get another primate species, it's going in here. And these hornbills are going out. And so that's why it looks like this sign is just uh, simple. So yeah, these are uh, hornbills, by the way, were made by Drak. One of these Birds of the Worlds pack, it will be in the description. We also have some uh, backstage, so we can go in here. Got some night rooms for hornbills, and then the velvet monkeys as well. And there's some extra doors here. And I, I don't know why this thing has three sets of doors, but that's kind of how Mystic Monkeys does it. Although I th think they only have two sets, but still. They have one on the back on the side here, and then another one in the front. Another thing I fixed from Mystic Monkeys is that uh, this like keeper entrance here, this double gate, it's on the guest side. So like you'll be viewing this and there'll be this gate here and I thought, I mean realistically you wouldn't have that because it just it intrudes on the guest's viewing experience. So you put it in the back here where the staff comes. Anyway, moving along. Another thing I want to do with these bins is eventually I want to put them... Um, direction signs on there so once the zoo gets big enough you'll have like a sign be like that way to the lions that way to the uh, reptile house and whatnot but right now the zoo is too small for that so it just says cloud falls in. yeah the old uh, waterfowl exhibit now revamped and holding some waterfowl oh we also got uh, one of our peafowl there this kind of this area over here is one big peafowl exhibit, so I've got a pair running around. But anyway, yeah. 
So first of all, I know that there are swans on the work on the moddable. There's modded swans. I think made by Bongo. But the problem is those swans need deep water, and yeah, I kind of want to keep the water shallow. So if I put the swans in here, and they're just floating around, unfortunately. So in the future, I'll either move the swans to exhibit with deeper water, or make this pond deeper. But for now, I want it shallow because, like I said. I also got tortoises and you know I don't want my tortoises to drown so and now it will be shallow until I relocate the tortoises or the swans but yeah mute swan and wild headed goose and as you can see with the swan map I made the entire the globe and the swans I had to include the, ti the entire globe because they have a really fast introduced range surprisingly large populations in North America and then New Zealand I think they're actually like formally protected in New Zealand, Japan, Australia, some spots in South Africa as well, and even South America. And yeah, they've been introduced in a lot of places. And we also have our bar headed goose sign. As you can see, yeah, I included a introduced, but then also native breeding and native non breeding. Like that. And yeah, so also fix up the bench as well. It's implied benches. The guests can't actually sit on here, but I pretend that they can. When you have a peak file. So we have a... I, ju I like just put these in because uh, who is going to do for anything? I just traded someone for some for the peak file, so... I was like, yeah, I wanted free roaming peak file and someone had them available, so I just traded some other animals that I didn't need. And that's how you get new animals in the ZSU. You can trade and look at what other people got. Over here, like I said, leopard tortoise. But it's just Eldabra giant tortoise babies. And I'm pretending that they're leopard tortoise because I don't think there's leopard tortoise on the workshop yet. Come over here. And then we have two um, very giant enclosures. Like, this you see at a lot of zoos, in, even like Joburg and Pretoria. And these zoo these enclosures don't have any signs because I imagine these are like in the corner of the zoo, very janky type type exhibits. So I didn't even think about putting signs up. And that's why you don't have signs for them. But we got a blue crane in here, so a pair over here and another pair over there. Should maybe put some houses for them to shelter in, but for now it's just like that. And there's also some uh, sneaky hidden animals. Maybe you've seen him. Yeah, not now you can see them. We've got a pair of blue dakers in here, so I took one of Drock's dakers and just recolored it so they look like blue dakers. So that's blue crane and daker exhibit. Now if we carry carry along here, you can see this is going to our staff area. Also made us retaining wall. This uses um the O's by the way, and then just put some mulch in there. That's a retaining wall. Yeah, so big gate to say guests don't come in here. That's our staff area. Still need to work on it a bit, but uh, yeah, there's also a golf cart. Uh, the golf cart was made by uh, Dalquist Two. So again, in the description, in the collection, you can check that out. Another angry archer. I forgot to delete. And yeah, I, I really like this view over here. This is a, a nice view. So, if you remember in the Grotteskia Zoo recreation, we got some uh, toilet blocks. So yeah, I've seen some pictures of them, and in real life, in like the Bannon Zoo, they look really gross, filled with garbage, peeled. So now I'm imagining they just the. Oh, out here. Yeah. So, I imagine the zoo came in renovated. There was another one near where the aviaries are, but I just took demolish that. I figured that's it's not a historic building, so they wouldn't want to, they wouldn't have to keep it. So, just demolish it with this one, keep it here, and it is um actually usable. There's a toilet block inside, so guests can come and use it. Yeah, so the zoo came, renovated, repainted it, made it look all nice. And over here, 
I don't know if you can tell what's inside by the little symbol on top, but this is our herb hall. So we've got what lizards and uh, some froggies. And some uh, salamander uh, axolotls as well. So yeah, as you can see, I made a whole bunch of custom terrariums. And these are available on the workshop, so if you want to go check those out, look in the collection in the description. And a bunch of, uh, you can have a bunch of small terrariums to add to your things. The ones I added are empty, and you can add your own plants like I'm at. I suggest using these, um, I should get them up. So there's a few things like if you go type in rock, there's these African decorative rocks, these are good. There's a couple plants, I think like the the mat, the spiny mat head, brush grass, that's a small plant. The temple, the underwater, yeah, the underwater temple plants are also really great. You can put those in. Yeah, so these are axolotls. I put an extra little sheet of glass here at the top, so it kind of looks like a water level. So it looks like this thing's actually underwater. These axolotls, by the way, also made by Druk. And then, come over here, this is supposed to be a, um, I don't remember what this, one of them's a frog, no, actually, yes, wait, so, this one's supposed to be, no, this is underwater as well, that's why I had another glass sheet, so it looks underwater, this is supposed to be an African clawed frog, this one's a Sambava tomato frog, and you might have noticed I have kind of a color coding thing going on with the signs, so, if you notice the other signs, the birds were red, the uh, the tortoise, the leopard tortoise is a, a green, the, and then the mammals are like a bit of a yellowy brown. We'll see even some of the other signs later, but kind of color coding, I like that. Over here we have our, our Gila monsters, which I mean, I know they're in the game, but that 4x4 massive box isn't going to work in here, so they implied as well. This is supposed to be a, a bunch of baby Nile crocodiles, so I'll put a picture on screen what it's based on. It's based on the um, Nile crocodile exhibit at Dangerous Creatures at Ashaka Marine World, so yeah, they just have a whole bunch of babies. I, Ashaka Marine Green World doesn't have a... I don't think they have facilities big enough to hold the adults, so they probably just get the babies for a little while, and then once they grow up, they send them back to a farm or something. That's what I'm assuming. And so yeah, yeah, this would have a bunch of babies, and when they grow up, I'm gonna build new exhibits for them as well. Then, this is just an empty terrarium. I think this has the baby... What was it? Yeah, I think for my update, I said the, the rhinoceros iguanas gave birth, so I was like, yeah, this is a terrarium that has the babies. That's also why it doesn't have any signs, because it was just set up... Um, just like, unexpectedly, for the babies. This is supposed to be a boa constrictor, and I kind of forgot boa constrictors grow big, so I'm just pretending it's a it's a baby boa constrictor. Also, might have noticed I got some sockets in the in the walls, and they're actually plugged in over here, and it goes up to this little thing that probably has wires and powers the filters and lights. This still does have lights. Let me go to night time. Each of these little tanks have like a little light in them, so it shines down. Yeah, this one shows it. There's a light. These are small empty ones, they're supposed to have tarantulas, but I didn't get any tarantulas from the, the ZSU just yet. But I still wanted to like have a complete set, so just to show you guys the different terrariums. These are smaller ones for like tarantulas or something, but... I still go buy some tarantulas for the zoo. Or maybe scorpions. We got a little caiman statue. It's because we have the crocodiles here. And back behind this board we got a little makeshift staff area. So a little table, some containers with vitamins. This is maybe like a little terrarium with crickets or something. Cockroaches, a little spare empty terrarium, some spare shelves, like snakes and stuff. I took this from my Quoros Reptile Park project, just modified it a bit, but remember I had like a little shelving unit for snakes, so that's what this is. You can put reptiles in as well. 
this emergency holding. And then this just leads back. These are some wheelie, this is a wheelie bin made by Mr. Domez. Also, before I forget, I put a, a fire extinguisher back here. This was made by Max Aeneas, I think. So, yeah. The staff area just, this path just goes back here to the staff area. Eventually, I might hook it up to the, the staff area back there, but I'm not sure for now. Anyway, let's carry on to the last few exhibits. So here, uh, yeah, last episode I had this in and it was, I misplaced it, I put it somewhere over there. It's actually over, supposed to be over here. And uh, just did the foliage up a little bit. I have, I have some nice ideas if I get some, uh, some ungulates, I think uh, this could make a nice exhibit. If maybe I get some follow deer, but those aren't very common in South African zoos. Or something like Nyala or Bushbuck. Like I, mean, I think this could work well because you just have this shaded canopy of trees. I really like that. So once I get animals for that, then I'll put that in there. But yeah, remember last time? This is the old lion exhibit. And of course, like, lions aren't really a starter animal for the ZSU, so... I mean, though I will argue that if it's an African zoo, lions can be on the table, but uh... But anyway, lions aren't considered starting animals, but uh... Instead I put some pygmy goats. So. Okay, so sorry for that abrupt cut, but um... I ran out of disk space. So I was, I was reviewing everything, and then only afterwards I saw that... I didn't record anything, but anyway, I thought it was the perfect time to come back here because I forgot to show these all. A rhinoceros iguana, which actually just... The lesser Italian iguana mod made by Leaf, he just took the, the base game model and put them on the monitor, changed some stats, but they look like rhino iguana, so... That's what I did here. Like I said, this is based on the monitor exhibit at Kango Wildlife Ranch. They have an actual, like, tree stump there and they can go and hide in the grooves here, but... I couldn't actually like show any grooves or stuff, st 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 things like that here because these things are like massive logs. So, but yeah, that's the uh, this is the rhino iguana exhibit. You can kind of see that color coding that I mentioned with the sign. So this is a, a green and come over here to the meerkats. A bit more of a yellow. And yeah, so. Also put this nice little like water tray here. The keepers haven't folded it up yet, but I think it's cool that the, the keepers they you can fold this up and then the iguanas might just come and lay on here. They can actually traverse over it if they want. So, so I'm not sure why the keepers don't fold this up. Maybe it's just out of their range, but it'd be so cool if the iguanas just came and sat in the water. They used to be able to fit through this. Uh, this cave, but then I placed all these other rocks, and now they can't. So. Yeah. I've also got the staircase leading up to the aviaries, and I like the the elevation changes. It's gonna have a lot of this in the zoo because, like I said, it's built on a mountain slope, so a lot of elevation changes, which is gonna be a pain to build with, but it'll look good in the end, make it look a lot nicer. But sorry, back to the goats. Did I show off these signs? I don't remember. This is the History of the zoo, this is the history of the lion exhibit. And now, this is the lion exhibit itself. And these are the, the goats. So these um, are the, actually the alpine goats made by J2 Bex. And um, I'm just pretending they're pygmy goats. And yeah, they, they work quite nicely in this area. I would ideally like some Himalayan to come here, although I'm not sure if that's super realistic, and the reason why I want Himalayan Ta, if you actually, if you don't know the animal that's on the logo for Cloudful Zoo, that's supposed to be Himalayan Ta. And the reason why is that because the Khrutuskia Zoo imported a pair of Himalayan Ta, and a pair of the, or I think I'm not sure how many they imported, but a pair escaped onto Table Mountain, and have since established a huge feral population. Recently, a lot of them have been culled to make room for Klipspringers because they're actually indigenous to the to Table Mountain and they want to reintroduce them, so kill the tar to make space for them. 
So even though we don't get tar naturally, I mean, not naturally, you don't get tar in zoos anymore, I'm thinking that maybe it could be feasible that the zoo went and recaptured some of the mountain, put them in the zoo, since, I mean, you know, they're an invasive species, and they don't get in the zoos, it might still be realistic. But yeah, anyway, that's why the, the logos are of a Himalayan tar, in case you're wondering. But yeah, these goats do well on this cliff. Got a nice, lots of traversable area. This exhibit, I think, works really well for them. Anyway, back this way. Also, I like I like the fact that the guests can actually use this. They do sometimes stand over the edge because it's two meters, but it's cool to see that they use this. Back this way, our last two animals back here. We have our spotted eagle owl. You can see this is a, a staff part, so keepers can actually come in here and then a spotted eagle. Obviously, we don't have owls in the game yet, but I used owl from my owl pack. You just put some tops up here to shelter him from the rain and some wood pieces to uh, give him some privacy. Yeah, that's the owl exhibit. So if you come over here on the left, these next two line exhibits have been changed to hold. Let's see. Where are they? Where are they? There they are! A caracal! <laughs> Dramatic entrance. Ooh. Yeah, so these are recently modded in by Giorno Pizza and these are really good. I really love how they, they're done. The climbing is a bit wonky, but that's just the game. Yeah, these were made really well. So we got a pair of them in here. There's one there, there's the other one. And yeah, as you can see, like in these line exhibits, what I've done is taken out the brick flooring, put some natural substrate, put some plants, climbing structures, and yeah, this works really well. Also, for so they can traverse between the areas, I just put some um, these branches here between there and also the night room so they can actually traverse between them and they can use the entire space. So that's really great. I was worried that when I actually because I built this exhibit first, and then like the mod came out much, much later. So I was afraid that they weren't going to be able to reverse, but now they can do it quite nicely. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, and I realize that this isn't a very guest, idiot safe, if you will, exhibit. Because, you know, you can come up and stick your hand in and a caracal can bite a chunk of your hand off. And I noticed that's a trend in these... Uh, newer zoos like mystic monkeys you can go and like probably pet the ocelots if you wanted to or the monkeys there's not much guest protection whereas the older zoos like Joburg and Pretoria they like straight up put a fence there's like no we don't trust your intelligence we're putting up this fence so that you don't go and interfere with our animals but yeah so I guess that's realistic eventually maybe in the future I can put up a fence to stop people from getting their fingers bitten off but yeah, that is the current Cloudfall Zoo. I'm going to take a big overview over here. Like I said, things are very liable to change. It's kind of like how Claintain Zoo is, but at a much smaller scale, with a much lower budget. So depending on what animals I get, I might change stuff. So like, this exhibit's supposed to be it's a very temporary one. I'm, I like built this with full intention of eventually demolishing it, putting something nicer in the future once, you know, it makes it more sense to have like higher budget and whatnot. And then species might change, so like the tortoises might move somewhere else. The crocodiles will grow up and then we'll put them in another exhibit and then we'll put other waterfowl in here. And yeah, yeah, so that's it. That's what the fun thing about this project is. So if you want to join ZSU, I I am um, recommend it. I just I know some people don't like the limitations, like I said. You're not going to get any really big animals off the bat. Like no no lions, elephants or anything like that. You will eventually, after a few months, we're going to build up to them. Get them in the system. But for now it's mainly, you know, nothing really of a showstopper, if you will. But I, I think it's fun. I like the whole collaboration project. Some people just don't like those limitations. And I understand. But maybe just come on the server to see what people are doing. Because some people are building some really nice stuff and uh 
Yeah, actually, wait. One thing I want to show that I really liked is how this place looks at night. With uh, this parking lot particularly, I don't know. I know it's a weird thing, but since putting these lights in, I really like how this looks. Yeah, so this, this parking lot will also get renovations eventually, but... Yeah, so it's, it's also kind of timeline zoo, but much smaller scale. So I hope you enjoyed watching. I'm not too sure what's going to happen in the next episode. Like I said, it all depends what comes my way in the ZSU. So if I get a bunch of ungulates, I might build an ungulate exhibit. If I manage to increase my reptile collection, I might build a proper reptile house, not just some uh, like a, a a general hall. This is just a hall that they built, and they just put some tanks in there. But maybe an actual dedicated reptile area. Definitely some backstage stuff. That's coming next episode, and also next episode of uh, Claintain Zoo, I also want to... I'm not too sure what I'm going to do for that one either, but also, they'll also have some backstage stuff, I hope. I haven't even started then, but... Yeah, until the next episode, like I said, link to ZSU will be in the description, as well as all the workshop and mod stuff I used. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one hopefully. Bye!